Hello everyone, uh, welcome to our stream for the Steam Digital Tabletop Fest. Um, we are endemic, or at least a part of it. Um, I guess we're going to do some introductions, um, so I'll hand over to James. Hello oh, everyone, I'm James. I'm the creator of Plague Inc. and Rebel Inc. and Plague Inc. the board game and all the other things that we'll, we'll talk about in a moment. I've been making Plague Inc. since 2012, so it's been quite a while now. And yeah, happy to be here. Over to Sam. Hi, I'm Samuel Mosho. I'm the junior narrative designer and community manager here at Netdemic. Over to Harvey. Hi, I'm Harvey. I'm one of the designers. Been uh, been here for a little over, well, about under a year and a half now. Yeah, I, I design the things, play Inc, Rebel Inc, all that stuff. Design the things, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Ollie. I am the new boy. I've only been here um, for about a month, um, and I'm the creative lead here. It's far by fire for you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, so maybe we should say what we're broadly going to do. We're going to look in this stream at. Um, we're going to talk about plague. We're going to talk about plague the board game. We're going to talk about the board game scenario inside plague digital game to be super, super meta. Um, <laughs> so it's like the first thing that we should talk about, which is very much, I think, the elephant in the room for the kind of games that we make or are making is uh, COVID. So that's a thing that we're all doing now. And I say we, we as in like everyone in the world. So James, I was wondering, can you talk a little bit about Endemic as a studio, the games we make and COVID and kind of what that means? Um, so yeah, we, we make games based on serious, realistic topics. And when I made Plague Inc, I never, for, I never imagined that the whole world would be kind of uh, going through a serious global pandemic. I didn't think I'd be seeing all the stuff I put into Plague Inc actually happening in real life. It's been, it's been horrendous actually seeing that kind of, of, of play out as, as the months have, have gone on. Um, I think, We've 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 tried to sort of strike a balance where we want we're very proud of how our game is is there to kind of let players understand and engage with quite a scary topic, but we also need to remind people that it's not a serious simulation. It's it's still a game first and foremost. So um, it's been quite a, a tricky line for us to 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 uh, sort of follow. Actually, well, we one of the things we did fairly early on in the. Uh, during the pandemic was we decided we wanted to support the WHO and CEPI who are a global vaccine um, organization so we made a large donation to them um, which we've been um, pleased to sort of see having, having an impact help, helping them doing their various bits and pieces but we've also been working on a new cure version of plaguing which when we were talking to all these doctors all these experts and they're saying hey we'd really like to see how how things could work if plaguing worked the other way so we'll talk, that's not what this talks about. We'll, we'll touch on that a bit later, but that's sort of some of the key things that we're, we're working on at the moment and something we're doing to hopefully help people understand the kind of the, the complexities and trade-offs that need to be made in managing a kind of a, a pandemic situation like we're all living through at the moment. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult. I mean, I, I like to see our games doing well because we make great games and suddenly... Yes, seeing it all play out in the, in the news. I mean, I think, uh, yeah, it's 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 been really tricky to sort of deal with and process. I think just seeing seeing all the people getting in touch with us, saying that it's helped them when they've been feeling quite scared and powerless to kind of take back a bit of control, even if it's in a game. That's uh, yeah, I've, I've been quite proud of that, and even if it's a, a tricky situation. It's just about how, yeah, people letting people hopefully take away the the key learning nuggets from it, without well, while still yeah bearing bearing in mind it is a game at the end of the day. And I think I think people tend to do that, which I'm I've been quite pleased with. I think we should do yeah. So let's yes, let's start off with um, the the basic game of what what Plague is. We'll go into other things, but I think let's start off with. Yeah, we can we can all make critical comments on Sam as he, as he plays, and hopefully we'll be wild by his tactics. Well, one one thing we're going to do later on is we're actually going to have Sam and Harvey playing the the Plague Inc. multiplayer together, which will be interesting. You know how the ancient Romans used to kind of throw people to the lions, 
Uh, Sam has not played multiplayer before. Harvey has played it a few times. He, he's won a few. Lost <laughs> right. Okay. So I'll I'll start off just by outlining all the different parts of of playing the different versions about how they all the kind of journey we went on to get to our actual board game version and our our um, digital board game scenarios back in the game. Um, I guess we've got the base. Plague Inc., which originally launched back in 2012, and we've been adding new updates to new disease types, uh, simian flu, vampire diseases, um, necroa, zombie viruses, and all sorts of different content. Sam, here we have him playing a, a, a basic bacteria. Is he going to play it on casual? No. Yeah, no. Oh, no. <laughs> can't play on casual while people are watching. Um, <laughs> So we've got we've got the base game, and I'll I'll talk more about how that actually works as as Sam continues to play it. Um, but then, what a few years after Plague Inc. first came out, I was playing some board games, and I decided, uh, with your name, right, <laughs> Harvey, give us a with your name, James. Oh, <laughs> James Varistas. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah, I decided I wanted to, I was playing a lot of board games at the time and we were, we were, I was trying to create the plaguing models multiplayer at the same time, the versus and co-op modes. And we'll, we'll talk more about those later as well. But I was trying to get all the kind of the player to player mechanics and game design elements sorted in my head. And I thought a board game, that'd be cool. So we'll, we'll talk more about the board game as well. We've got the board game, which has been out now since 2016. Um, we've got it on Amazon, we've got an expansion for it as well, Plague Inc. Armageddon. And then after we did that, we thought, well, we've just made a board game. We've got the ability to do all sorts of scenarios in Plague Inc. Why don't we do a board game scenario in Plague Inc., which is where um, we, we let players kind of design their own custom board game. They can kickstart it, they can crowdfund it in various ways, and they can try and sell as many copies as possible of it. So that gave us kind of the, the digital board game scenario, and, and that's kind of one of the key reasons why um, people thought we'd be quite a good fit for this Steam Festival, because you kind of, you've gone digital game to board game, then we've got a digital game version of the board game. And at some point, I would quite like to do a, a fully digital version of the tabletop board game itself. So that would be playing the board game, the video game. No, playing the video <laughs> game, the board game, the video game. I think it's got a good, a good ring to it. The marketing will write, it, will write itself. Anyway. Um, I, I think we need so, to do a board game scenario for the board game. <laughs> Yes, that'd be good. Um, so what, <laughs> or a tabletop game to be a board game. Um, so okay, what have we got is... going on in Plague Inc. at the moment? So for anyone who doesn't know what Plague Inc. is, you're trying to infect the world with a deadly disease. Here we've got Sam. You, where do you start your disease, Sam? In India. Uh, I've done mostly kind of land transmission. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. that spreading. Mm -hmm. Gonna get some heat resistance if you started in India. Yeah, so I don't need to get extra one. Oh, uh, no, that's that's true. That's true. Um, so yeah, so you, you start your disease somewhere, and then you um, evolve it through all the traits, and you choose how it's going to transmit, the kind of symptoms it's going to give, and as the player goes, you need to kind of balance all these different um, elements of the simulation. So. It's just got insomnia. Did you get insomnia or did that mutate on its own? It mutated. Um, I've evolved it. Oh, you're no one going notices. for the devolving strategy. Shame. <laughs> the shame? The, the, well, <laughs> the, the devolving strategy is always just, it's trying to stay hidden. That's always been the, the core bread and butter of, of how people play plaguing. Um, and then as we've added new disease types over over time. We've tried to kind of disrupt that and make it so that people need to try different strategies, et cetera. Um, you might also want to speed it up, Sam, uh, probably, and then we can we can see, everyone can see how it goes. Oh, yes. a bit, a bit, a bit more. Yeah, I was going to say, yes. past the first um, like three disease types, you, you do struggle to stick with the, um, the strategy where you just stay out ah. of the radar for a long period of time. Oh, we've got Brexit. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Um, and one of the things we've always done is we try to put in semi-realistic news headlines into Plaguing because it's kind of it's 
quite interesting to see them pop up. I mean, that Brexit one, probably, I keep on thinking we need to take it out of the game because it's been in there for so long. But uh, <laughs> nobody knows what's happening there still, even four <laughs> years later or something. So we'll, we'll keep it in for a bit longer. Yeah, relevant. <laughs> I'm sure it will all be fine. Yeah, hopefully in January we'll be able to take it out. Fine. <laughs> um, yeah, but so that's how the game the game goes really. At some point, Sam, I don't, I don't be a coward. I, I think come <laughs> don't on, be a play, coward. Play bold. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, well, I'm going to get these air and water ones as well, just so, that, so they're quite relevant to the board game. They're huge part of it, right? True, true. Okay, fine. Um, um, yeah, and you've got all these little airports and um, and ports that you can see dotted around the world, and you'll see vehicles be like um, begin to get infection and carry that infection around the place. Um, and certain countries are harder to get into than other countries. Ollie, snap poll. What's the hardest country to infect in in plaguing? Greenland. Ah, you got it. Greenland? Okay, fine. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> there's a lot of people there. And there's what? Is it just an airport? There's no port? I can't remember. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a port. We actually made t shirts of it about a few years ago. I think, I think you can still get them on Amazon in the US. Um, t shirts to do, it was a few of them to do with Greenland and stuff. Um, ah, so here the disease is now being, being yeah. spotted. And found. Um, yeah. Because did I. Right? What, what, an alarm start going off in the heads of, uh, of inexperienced players. <laughs> yeah. you're, on a, you're on a deadline now before you leave. Uh, it's only level one priority. That's uh, so a James Awareness Day. I think. Yeah. <laughs> James <laughs> Awareness Day. <laughs> Every day of the office is James Awareness Day. <laughs> it's always been really interesting seeing how um, people name their diseases, actually, because you get some of them which are kind of people trying to, to, make, to make a point about something, naming it after um, um, sort of something in their lives that's important to them. But quite often you see them naming it after their partners or boyfriends or girlfriends and stuff. Um, and then you also get, we, we had quite a few Brexit ones, quite a few political ones, I'll let you guys guess. <laughs> <laughs> we, won. we, won't into, we won't go into all that now. Uh, this is the stream for everyone um, but you can you can really see trends kind of popping up so i do remember when it was the um last u.s elections you were uh, both both the candidate names kind of bubbled bubbled their way up up the top on our stats and stuff and yours now we have um fake news as well the scenario to um yeah i mean people always see like particular events where it's like disease name killed so many people or deceived so many people so, you know, putting in like a particular political name uh, and then having that politician kill so many people, or you may be more interested in having that person deceive so many people. Um, so you can like yeah. punt, punt for your screenshot on different scenarios. Well, it helps, and it helps on Reddit and stuff. The, the fake news point is actually quite interesting. I don't think we're going to have time to go into it in more depth, but, but we did find last year for the UK elections, we, we worked with um, a few... Um, organizations and charities who are fighting against fake news and misinformation to make this fake news scenario and what was fascinating when we were developing it was how how so many of the the core infection algorithms that underlie plague inc are perfectly suited to fake news um, and um i mean yeah it was actually quite i mean harvey i think that was one of the first projects you worked on wasn't it when you when you started it, and, and it was the uh, the first bit of plague ink i worked on for sure yeah yeah, yeah. and and i guess we, we learned quite a lot as we were making it in terms of all these different mechanisms and methods for how fake news percolates around we, we were able to tap into all these experts who were able to, to help uh, craft and, and the narrative to make sure it was it was it was working accurately. There's, yeah, there's um, surprisingly, so, sorry, so there's a surprisingly large number of intricacies with um, the way that fake news spreads. We we got from the experts. Mm, like, you mm, know, um, oh, sorry, I was gonna say like um, my my favorite one was um, I can't remember what we called it in the end, but where you hire someone really, or you encourage someone that's really unfavorable in the public opinion to come out against you. Um, so mm. I'm oh, yeah. agreeing with him. <laughs> so, so I, I, yeah. I mean, I've spoken to James about this at length before, but I think that the fake news scenario that you guys did, of course, before I joined you, was really interesting for a number of reasons, but primarily is that people who people have never thought of fake news as being something that spreads like a disease before. But as soon as you play that, mm. as soon as you play that scenario, 
it becomes so apparent the links between how this kind of wave of disinformation that is so relevant now um, is so just like a disease and it spreads from person to person and one person is a super spreader and, this, and how, how, how that the structure of that is a kind of really elegant and a kind of interesting point to make. Um, and that kind of leads me to something I was going to ask you earlier, James, was with the fake news scenario and kind of scenarios like that, were those things in your mind at all, right back at the start when you started Plague? It's kind of interesting how Plague as a platform has become so adaptable to these different types of scenarios that aren't necessarily diseases anymore. So some of the fake news one wasn't, I guess it wasn't really a big thing back in 2011. Um, like it is now. There were, I, I definitely knew I wanted to kind of get some some more uh, f- fictional diseases in there, i.e., like our vampires and our, our our zombies and stuff. And I wanted to see how the model could handle that. Um, but I think mean, for me, I, I always knew I wanted to do a version where the players are trying to stop the disease instead. So working on the cure version, which we we mentioned briefly, that's been uh, very interesting. That was always something that I wanted to make even. Even from the beginning, I think it just it got we 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 moved it up the priority list when we were talking to all these experts who were saying, "Hey, it'd be really helpful if you you got this out now so that people can can see how things work." Yeah, I was going to say the um the talks of a cure mode have um have been mentioned in documents dating many years back. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think actually it was in the original design doc for base plague ink when I I, mean, I made plague ink as a hobby and so. So limiting the scope was always a challenge. I think my initial design doc I did was like, oh, yeah, there'll be, there'll be the, the, the plaguing bit and there'll be the cure bit and I'll ship it all at the same time whilst doing it in my evenings and weekends. And then it very rapidly became clear that it was uh, a bigger, yeah, a bigger under. I'm sure I'll just rush out that cure mode in probably a couple of evenings of time or something like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, how are you doing, Sam? How, how um, do you feel? I'm getting there. Um, although well, Greenland has closed its ports. I can see. 47% Greenland's perfectly safe. Uh, I'm again, I have got a lot of the bird migration. Have you got all the water stuff? All the, anti- all the cold? Uh, no. Would the cold get me in there? Then? Oh, yeah. oh, no. Oh, serious I... mistake there. Oh, so... don't do <laughs> Is it just dying before it gets there, then? How am I going to face Harvey? How am I going to face Harvey? question. You definitely need to get all the cold questions. Have you got enough money for it? Uh, yeah, I should do. Yep, just the one. <laughs> the other thing as well is um, a lot of countries have already closed their yeah. seaports. I was going to say, that's and, my um, bigger problem. Yeah. You can get lucky, though. There are There is a few events in there that allow um, spreading events to happen in Greenland. I've got a bad yeah. feeling about this one. Because you can hold on, on I don't think I'm going to make it. <laughs> I'm not seeing this go very well. You kill a lot of people, though. <laughs> like, Canada's, Canada's got an open port still, and is Greenland's port still open? I know, it's shut. No, you're not getting cold yeah, resistance has devastated you in the, uh, the Fenniscandia region. Yeah, I never really thought about it that way. I assumed that if you could get in, you could get in. <laughs> <laughs> a lesson learned today. I tried to meta my way too far. Yeah. I guess this little, really... you rescue Sam from embarrassment, though, by moving smoothly onto the next section <laughs> without drawing attention to the fact that we're going to jump on. Just move on. To uh, move on to the, uh, the board game scenario. Uh, no, we're going to talk about multiplayer. Um, and maybe, Harvey, you were going to duke out with Sam. We'll have to be quick because we're, we're talking way more than I thought we were. But I thought we were doing board game bits next. Oh, we can do board game bits next. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do board game bits next. Okay. So, so let's do board game bits so people can see see how um, all the different aspects of it kind of fit in. Because one thing, once once board game and multiplayer were kind of designed at the same time. So I think yeah, look, look, we've got what do we got? We've got footage to, to share, have we on on the board game? Yeah. So through the magic of editing, there will be a uh, some board game footage playing about now. Right. Um, so. I think yeah. I think hopefully we're on the screen will be some some stuff. Some some guys in the in the US who've played a fair bit of it. And they they do various streaming stuff. They kind of said we could share some of the footage on this. Um, getting the the digital plaguing down into a format where people could play it as a board game was was very challenging and also very very satisfying to do. A lot of the aspects of the board game, I kind of I wanted to make sure 
carried across so you have players who you each have your disease type and then you choose to evolve it through the use of trait cards you give it waterborne or, or, or airborne as, as Sam mentioned before you're you're putting down little tokens infecting cities and different countries and um, you increase your lethality to to try and kill it you, you get more infectivity to try and put more tokens down and you you slowly grow grow throughout the board but one of the key things I wanted to capture was that if you kill countries too quickly then you weaken yourself because you haven't got a presence on the board anymore and that that worked out quite quite well actually and then we also have events in the game where players can um, can use bird migration to hop across into other people's countries and there's there's a lot of um, backwards and forwards between different players um, I guess capturing that kind of um, the, the having you wanted it to be sort of accessible while still having a lot of the strategic depth um, was was challenging but I'm, i've been really pleased with the result guys we kick-started it we we we've and we we, we, we sell about ten thousand copies of it a, a year now which in in mobile terms is is nothing but in in board game terms that's a, a respectable number um and we've even been able to make an, an expansion for it and we, we we still play it in the office every now and again i think harvey and sam you guys have been playing it uh, at home with haven't you with, with friends and family whilst we've been on on lockdown yeah i've been trying to get them trained up uh, yeah, uh, me and my partner have been playing quite a lot. Um, yeah, it's it's really fun. Like it, we once we actually got hold of it, and um, we were playing it pretty much every night. Um, my go girlfriend does get very aggressive in it, though. She's determined to win. Are you on like, much of the Armageddon expansion? Yeah. Um, so uh, last time she was here, um, we played. What was it? The, we both played uh, bioweapon. So we both had human lethality. And we were using the Armageddon skill uh, repeatedly. Um, and we were building mm -hmm. up a stack of countries. Um, we also forgot to balance out our country cards, so we actually had the entire deck. Uh, uh, you well, can do that. Um, <laughs> and it was about halfway through, I was like, oh, we forgot to pick out the right numbers. Um, and we'd killed like 15 countries each by that point. Oh, God, we buy a weapon. <laughs> that must have been in intense. Yeah. Um, um. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was. That was fun because then there was a few bits that were in that where um partner ended up like putting spreading their tokens out too much and getting trapped in countries without being able to kill them. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. and then I was able to kinda big risk playing as bioweapon um to either either kill yourself out or not have the ability to jump to different countries fast enough. It's it's quite a, a difficult uh, disease to play optimally. We did kill our diseases. Well, it was quite cool about being able to say, go ahead. I was just saying we did kill our diseases off once or twice and had to do the reset. Uh, <laughs> what was quite cool with designing the Armageddon expansion for the board game was that I was able to to look at the play styles that people were doing and then try and make um, different disease types that kind of fitted in with what they were doing and letting them try new options and reward certain play styles, etc. Um, it, it was it was really cool doing the doing the board game it's, it's just nice having a tangible thing i think we've all got it in the back back of our camera screens and stuff it's, it's nice just having a tangible thing you can uh you can look at on it and i think that, that it, once we did it as soon as we did it we thought oh how can we tell the digital playing players about the board game and that's when we thought custom scenario about board games on play in digital playing um so i don't know if it's worth us having a having a look at that so we were saying before that we'd like to try and make Plague Inc. the board game in Plague Inc. the board game scenario. Um, well, yeah, so it, the, it completes the chain, right? Once you have the um, once you have the digital version of the board game, then you can have a digital yeah, version of the board true. game playing the digital version of the board game scenario <laughs> on the digital version this of the is, game. This is what I want to see. This is what I want to see. Just this stuff. This also, is, I think, people are. I noticed so it's, it's a based... natural, like logical conclusion to where we're going, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, the logical conclusion is. Plaguing the video game, the board game, the video game. Yeah. So I see it's based on the Nerex worm. Mad cow disease is a good one. Quick, Sam, go back and show everyone the mad cow disease <laughs> icon. That's a particular favourite uh, icon. <laughs> Look at that. Glorious. That was done by Daisy. Uh, <laughs> it's a... I like how the cow, is, the cow is seemingly fine with having its head. <laughs> We did an animated GIF of it actually, because it, oh. was, it was such a good one. The only time we've ever done an animated GIF of a scenario icon. 
Oh, maybe if you're extra lucky, James, I'll try and dig out that animated GIF and it'll go. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, the blessed worm. Um, so, so this is playing the board game, yeah. Yep. So. Oh, do you want the board game uh, in there? Well, that's the name of the, the, ah. name of the board game. Is playing the board game. Unfortunately, TBG. Do TBG on it. That will give it give it to us just about with our character length. So, Esther's given you two years to design and produce a new board game. Can you top the sales charts in that time? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> dramatic reading. Uh, once you've built your IKEA office furniture and grabbed yourself a coffee, it's, you can start immediately. Get started immediately on designing your game. So I think it's funny because I don't think James drinks coffee. Is that right? I don't, but I do do lots of IKEA furniture building. Like that's always the test when people start working here. They've got to build their own uh, desk and stuff out of it for their lockdown. I joined, I joined you guys in lockdown, so, uh, right. so well, you know, uh, let's make sure it's uh, as accurate as possible. Although my desk is, is an OK desk, so I guess it's all fine. There you go. So with scenarios, we get, we get to have a lot of fun with, with scenarios in playing in general, that you can change so much around them. And it's amazing how some, some relatively small changes feels quite different. So here you can see Sam's choosing mechanics, themes, components, and all these different bits that you stick into the game, they all... Uh, change how hyped people get about it, how complex it is, how easy it is to manufacture. And if you can get certain combos, uh, it gives you big bonuses. And if you can, or if you get a particularly horrendous combo, it can give you certain negatives. So um, you've got all these different different themes and, and bits of places that we kind of, we, we scraped with. So Sam, are you trying to make a, a Plague in the Board game one, are you? Yes. Okay, let's see. What, what are you going to choose? I don't so, see how you judge the playing board. <laughs> oh, all oh, right. Is, is that to have a positive combo for us, or did we never try to do this in the past? There is, of course, there is. If you if yeah. you get the right stuff, you will get a playing combo on it. I... Okay, well, I'm going to try oh. then. All right, so hand management. Oh, okay, that's oh, that's for it. Player I think elimination. It's got, be, it's got to be disease based. Um, if you look in the theme, I think it's got to be disease based. I can't quite remember what what the other bits are. It's kind of educational. It's probably we have an educational one, probably not nautical. Just uh, medical, is that I the they have wipe out humanity? Yeah, it's very good. That's got to be the one I would say. Area control. Yeah, area control. Dice rolling. Oh. A little bit. I, I wouldn't call it a dice rolling game. No trading. No. Have to take that. There is a bit of take that in it. Not much. Spire face offs, not the Nicolas Cage kind. Nah, it's not competitive. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is versus, though. Yeah, true. Uh, so, anything else that needs to go in the theme? I think that's... Nah, let's, let's, get, let's get it rolling. Yep. Components, is dice. Oh yeah. Yeah. Tokens. Good. Yeah. Tokens. No miniatures. No miniatures. So while we're on this screen, when you're putting together your criteria of themes and components yeah. and stuff, were there any games? Were you to, to come up with this list of stuff? Were you going through your favorite games and thinking, oh, okay, that one does this, 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 that one does this, this, this? And that all goes into my list well, of things. It sounds ridiculous to say it, but, <laughs> but when I actually started making play in the board game, I, I didn't really play that many board games. And now I play loads of board games, but I actually kind of, I started off designing in the board game without much knowledge of, oh, you don't, oh, sad. <laughs> Did we, I thought we had a theme. <laughs> you designed a very good game. Oh, no, guys. Oh, no. It has a theme. <laughs> I, think, I think we've got a bug. Medical is a theme. I think we found a bug in the game. Harvey, oh, no. make it make a task to investigate this after the stream. Oh, it's it's fine. It's, the companies have, the companies let me back in after they checked their notes. Okay, fine. Um, yeah, so, so, no, it, it was kind of. Oh, no. It was more about. <laughs> no, it was a miserable failure. Right. 
Get us, get us another one before we yeah, yeah. while, while I keep talking to distract people. Um, so, where were we? Oh, yeah. So, no, it's more about just looking at the digital game and thinking, how on earth can you get all of these different aspects into a, a board game? And so much of Plague Inc. is kind of, it looks like you're playing it top down and looking down at the world as if it was a table. So, some of it was quite easy. But at one point, we even thought about doing a, a risk style game where you're, you're kind of, you're moving disease pieces around instead of normal pieces. But then there was so much we could get into that that kind of game. We wanted to to have a, a lot more of the kind of the, the spreading around the world, the the events and stuff. So quite rapidly we moved away from that. But it was really, as with most of our games, it was kind of a very much a a, a iter heavy iterative approach. Like we spent this was meant to be done in like a couple of a couple of months whilst uh, the tech guys were were getting all the foundational stuff in for plaguing multiplayer. But it actually ended up taking a year, a year plus on it. As, as Chilling out the board game for a couple of months. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. And seeing all the, doing all the Kickstarter stuff, that's great. I mean, the kind of the, the connection you get with a, with a really um, passionate community and player base is, is phenomenal. And there's so, we had so much support from the Kickstarter. Um, and then also actually just getting to sell it global manufacturing it we manufacture it in china ship it around the world um selling it on amazon it's all fascinating stuff seeing all the logistical side of things it's kind of like you lift up the curtain a bit and see how all the logistical channels and, and stuff are working and which you don't really see normally you just if you're buying something from amazon, you don't realize all the complexity that all the sellers are having to to go through to to sell these games and these products yeah, it was hey. quite a, a paradigm shift from, um, oh, we got it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we made it. Yeah, the, um, like the, the moving from, you know, doing software, which you just, you know, you send off to the various companies like Steam, Apple and all that stuff, and people download it and play it, to having a, a physical object that you need to actually store somewhere and, like, it has to re meet, like, specific like company requirements, uh, like so that only so many can fit on like a a trolley or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. All new, all new things. Luckily, I didn't have to get involved in too much of that. But I, um, <laughs> I remember um, hearing a lot of all the all the fun that was going on in the office with uh, yeah. pallets that are stacked one thing too high and. Stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, joy. Well, what it makes really makes me feel glad about is how we're able to distribute our games, video games, digitally. Without, I mean, go go if you go back a bit of time. I mean, all all the printing of of DVDs and CDs and stuff that that must be have been nightmarish. I mean, there's a reason why you didn't have many indie games around at that point, I guess. And being able to just distribute it all digitally has been a life a life changer for us. I am launching a Kickstarter and advertising. Okay. okay. Interested in the whole world. I have about thirty people. Friends and family. <laughs> I, I feel you're, you're not you're not demonstrating playing in the board game in the best light here, Sam. So. Hmm. <laughs> With thirty right. people interested, not thirty players. Thirty interested people. Gotta build up that. Yeah, they haven't even bought it, have they? That's zero no, still, sales. I haven't released it yet. Yeah, yeah, we're in the production phase still. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think yeah. I did a better job than you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> you have to sell one million to win, isn't it? I can't remember actually how many it is to win. We, we more just wanted to let people be able to, to kind of have a creative, a creative kind of playthrough on it. Ah, here's our Kickstarter. Hello. Oh no! <laughs> and click on all the bubbles in time. <laughs> I'm not sure we want to start manufacturing yet. Although we do want to, to manufacture quickly enough that we've got time to do the, the verses made between Sam and Harvey. How are we doing on time, Ollie? We are at 40-ish uh, minutes. I don't know Oof. if my time is going to match up with whatever the end of video time is going to be. Oh. We've got loads of time. We have, we have a lot of bits that need to be cut out as well. Sam's playing in Super oh, Speed. Okay. Yeah, how quickly do you think you can wipe the floor with Sam? <laughs> There's a oh, speed run. I don't know. What was I found quite interesting when we were when I, when I was trying to design the the board game was 
I, I was designing the board game and the multiplayer game almost in parallel. We were kind of bouncing between different bits as, as we were going. And it was it was really helpful, actually, working on them both at the same time, because a lot of the kind of thought process I went through for how to make this physical product good um, was also really applicable to making the digital versus and co-op modes of, of play game. And there was, there was a huge amount of cross-pollination between the different areas, actually. And, and, thing, and yeah, it was, it was I, I do, doing a, a physical and, I mean, I guess a lot of designers, when they're making a video game, they do make a physical prototype first. So I guess, in a way, you could say, I, I made a physical prototype for the, for the base multiplayer game and then um, and then ended up actually commercializing it. <laughs> So where are we at? We've got 700 and something. Yeah, people. is that enough to yeah. start doing stuff? I, I don't know. Maybe you just picked some bad themes initially. Have you, you haven't started? <laughs> have you started the okay. <laughs> I picked uh, medical and educational. Is that my- Hey, you didn't give it a solo mode. Playing in the board game's got a solo mode. Did you, did you tick the solo mode option? I didn't. Oh, there you go. So no one, no one cares. Very important. No, solo modes are good. So no, having having no, a solo no. mode is, is quite a cool way for people to be able to learn learn how to play it and stuff. So I, I put the plague bot mode in. It was a fairly late, it was a last minute stretch goal, I think. Like we had a lot of Kickstarter backers saying they wanted it. So I, I, I spent a lot of myself in an office for a week and came up with a a, a solo player mode, which I, I, I'm pretty proud of actually. It kind of it's it's a challenge. It's definitely a challenge and it, it was quite easy to play. I've never really, um, I've never really been introduced by solo, solo board games. I've got lots of friends who actively are, and they'll they love setting mm. out a board game for themselves. But it's something I've never really sort of gone to. I just sort of found off that somehow. Um, the reason I think I like board games generally is it's more that it's just an excuse for me to hang out with my friends doing a thing than mm. it is mm. kind of the mechanics of the game. So I always kind of gravitate towards games that have trading or have um, kind of interface with other players rather than being something that's purely strategic and stoic and silent. I get that. I, get that. I, th I think that was one of the reasons, again, why actually making playing in the board game was quite cool for me, because it was a way to, for me to interact with some of my friends who don't normally play video games and you sort of get them all around the table. And actually quite a lot of my friends have since become more fond of board games after I forced them to play, uh, to play, to play mine a few times. Um, but actually, that's with. I agree with you on the so, solo mode. But that's why with I, I, with with playing in the board game solo mode, I kind of I wanted to make it almost as like a, a challenge of my skills to to beat the solo mode on its hardest difficulty. It, you've got you use exactly the same tactics that you would use against another player, but mm -hmm. there is zero margin for error. You've got to kind of exploit every single kind of uh, every single rule and mechanism in order to have a chance against the, the hardest uh, version of the solo mode. So we can progress. 12 months to go, Serge. We've got how many sales is that? 20, well, 20,000 people are interested, but about 100 sales. Okay. Well, that's going pretty good, though, I'd say. It does ramp up quite considerably towards the end, if I remember correctly. I was going to say as well with um with the board game mode, I think it's the first time where we we really use that, you know, in the initial creation screen where you have a massive grid of options and we allow you to choose anything. It's the first time that tech was used, um, and obviously mm. we slightly expanded upon it for the uh, the fake news. Um, and so I guess now in in one of the nice things about having a rolling game that gets continuous updates is now obviously we have a a system that we can. Um, continuously come back to and keep on improving, and we can we can do any of these scenarios in the future where you can yeah. select X number of options or one of X number of options. I think um, some of the stuff we've been doing recently actually could probably even expand on the same thing if we wanted to do it again. Yeah, I that's to me that's the joy of making a, a sort of a heavily algorithmic game like like Plague Inc and like our other other game Rebel Inc is that it it lets you can you can make a few small tweaks to a certain part of the game and it fundamentally changes the 
the whole game. You, you uh, if you change the model here, it kind of cascades through the rest of the game. And uh, yeah, I love the the, kind of the the way you kind of create create your game. It feels really fun and 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 creative. And and it also yeah it was very powerful when we when we brought it back for for um, for the fake news one as well. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Uh, how did you ever do a board game rebel version? I just want to see like little mini tanks. <laughs> <laughs> you love your miniatures, don't you, Ollie? Um, I would love to do a. Yeah, I'd love to do a board game version of Rebel Inc. I think whether it's justified or not is a different different matter. Like selling selling board games is really fucking hard. Like it is, there's a lot of people trying to make board games now, and it, the, the market is 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 brutal. Um, Play Inc. has done really well because. The digital version of Plague Inc. is still so popular. We're still at the top of the charts eight years later, 160 million players, et cetera, et cetera. So the, if making a good game isn't enough for it to actually do well, that's almost like the bare minimum entry level part of it. Um, and no, Rebel Inc.'s done really well. It's never going to be as big as Plague Inc. It continues to be. So I guess I'd be a bit nervous about putting, putting in all that effort and then and then not being able to sort of just to shift the sort of number of copies that we'd need to to kind of justify the time investment so i don't know i would love to i've got a design doc all written out for rebel Link, the board game but i um no, no promises on that one at the moment there, there's other things that we get first i'm sure we can bash out in a couple of months right I'm sure. oh, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> i think we haven't got much time left on i've hit about two million sales fine i'll take that I'll take two million sales. That seems like a good deal. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, be... One of the things that's quite different about the board game scenario is I think we you have a fixed amount of time to do it in, and you win if you get more than a million, if I remember correctly. Um, but we, we give you all that time so that it's quite it's quite an easy scenario. Scenarios go that the emphasis is on um, sort of more narrative side. But if you do want to take it seriously. Um, obviously, people can compete to see how many sales they can get uh, within the, the period of time they're, they're given. Yeah, there's not any others that are based off um, time limit, right? No, no. Um, it, as much as I wanted to be kind of uh, allowing everyone to sell a ball game to everyone in the world, it, it didn't quite pass my realism uh, <laughs> realism check to, to get it everywhere. So we had to kind of come up with some way around Sometimes. it. Some kind of draconian rule that insists that everyone in the world has a copy of this board game. Um, there's one guy yeah. in Greenland that refused to buy it, and you lost. <laughs> everyone in Greenland hates board games. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> Yay! Oh. Okay, very good. Well done, Sam. Thank you. The Play Inc. board game can be a success. Um, Okie doke, so we are in multiplayer land and um, Sam is going against Harvey and is probably going to get destroyed. Um, it's going to be beautiful. We're, 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 we're just discussing, I, I haven't played this in a very long time and Sam's played quite recently, so... He's really strange yeah. guy today as well. There is, there is great shame to be had if I lose, so... Yeah, uh, it's, this is a lose-lose for you, Harvey. Either you just appear nasty for like wiping the floor with Sam, or you lose, in which case we're not going to let you live down on this front. We're not going to let you live it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As in the office. I want that. As in the office, I've named my disease narrative team, so Harvey could be the design Fine. team. That's clearly the clash of the yeah, titans. Yeah, all right, great. Uh, let's do no genes. We'll do a gene free game for this, for, for purity. Your hands often. Yeah, that's how you just in the in the physical board game, that's how you decide who goes first. It's whoever washed their hands most recently. So it's a good way to actually uh, yeah, enforce yeah. hygiene standards if you want if you want to get an edge. So we all, yeah. all yeah. Not, we don't need to read this. Let's go. Oh, uh ooh. yeah. So one important element for the multiplayer version is that you don't you, you don't want to have your starting country discovered by the other player because it gives you an ongoing stream of DNA. So it kind of it makes it certain countries are better to start in than others. But if if your player knows that you're going to start there, then they can find your uh, origin straight away. So it kind of adds a certain level of 
of Meta on top of it. So what kind of place do you reckon Harvey might start in? He looks like a kind of three man kind of guy to me. Well, he normally tries to be sneaky, but I don't, I don't I, I, yeah, it's a tricky one to, tricky one to say. And Sam, just so you know, obviously time continues whilst you're evolving it does. In, in this in this mode. Um, so what, what has to happen is that you've got the bar at the top. You can see the number of infected people pushing one way or the other. And the aim of this is, is purely to infect everybody in the world or wipe out the other, the other person's disease. And there, we again, we iterated on, on this quite a lot, but there's a number of kind of key different approaches to take. You can, you can try and really bulk up your own infectivity and therefore get around the place uh, nice and quickly. Um, if you want to, you can try and try and uh, increase your lethality, which will give you more DNA going forwards. But if you have a really lethal disease, then the world will focus on curing you. And that actually opens up the second tactic. If, if one player notices the other player as being particularly uh, deadly, they can... Oh, we've just discovered each other, I think. Have you? No, you haven't. No, no, no. Um, oh, you've worried me there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I saw an icon out of the corner of my eye. Um, but also if one player sees the other player as being all lethal and, and obvious, they can actually choose to kind of go into stealth mode and um, and make it easier to uh, to to research the other person's disease for a cure. So so that opens up the other kind of tactic. Or if you want to be really aggressive, you can try and evolve your disease to exploit people infected with the other player's disease really easily and then try and kill them off and eradicate the other person's disease instead. So those are the three sort of typical ways, but I am not an expert in this. Since, since, since I released it, what, like four, four, five, four, five years, five years ago um, with, the, with the multiplayer originally, um, there have been a lot of players coming up with some uh, terrifying strategies and they're far, far better than me. Um, one of the community players, um, Overlord Gold, um, Gold Dragon, he, he came up with some very sophisticated strategies which have since been sort of uh, improved upon by a number of other people as well. I think they did a, tutor uh, they did a tournament quite recently. They did, I think, yeah. watching. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was far too scared to, to take part in it. <laughs> I don't know, it was confusing. <laughs> which I would have lost, definitely. It looks like, at, the, at least from the bar at the top, it looks like the, um, the design I'm losing is going so well there, Harvey. Yeah, it's it, you can't get too excited by the early on stuff. It's it because you because it's based purely on the numbers of people. Um, if somebody's in a quite a high population country, they can get quite an early surge, and then it can kind of flip okay. back. Uh, what you can do actually, is if again, if you're really advanced, players will look at how quickly and how, how many people they've infected and try and use that to work out where the other person has started. So, so for instance, people, uh, people in India, etc. Yeah, exactly. We know Harvey did not start in China or India because if he had, his population numbers would be way higher, assuming he's vaguely competent in his, in his play <laughs> Assuming. <laughs> assuming. Trying to find him, but luck so far. Well, so, yeah, yeah. So Sam's, you're sending in unscheduled flights, aren't you, around yeah. the place to try and infect certain countries. Probes. That's another way you can actually spot the other person's origin country. If you see a load of planes flying out of a country that doesn't normally have an airport, then you can you can start being suspicious. I am not good enough to be able to do that. I'm Obviously, very I'm nervous right now about the prospect of losing this game. <laughs> I it don't would be <laughs> I assume there's some sort of wager on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think if, if I win, I get nothing, and if you win, you get bragging rights over me for eternity. So yeah, it's it's, it's all to lose. Stakes are high. Uh, but wait, or or if we ever come back to the offices, then you you can be claim you can take Harvey's desk as your own. Oh. If, 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 <laughs> I think Harvey's got four monitors. So imagine, imagine that. Oh, yeah. Good dad. Only two in the office. We've also had to, have to home, we've had to move all the desks already because of all the um, COVID safe stuff. So we've, we all, we've all been working from, from, from home since the lockdown started, but we did have a, an office. One, I think we've had one office meeting in the last six months. So we had to kind of get all the tables and push them all to the side so we can have a socially distant 
uh, meeting, which would work quite well, but it's made the office look like a bit of a war zone at the moment with all this furniture. Yeah, we had all the windows open as well. Yeah. Yeah. He has done a lot of abilities. Scared now. So, yeah, I think Harvey's made it so that. What's he done? Um, uh, uh, effectivity, penitive. <laughs> Tried to say two words at once then. No, you put a penalty on him, I think. I think that, uh, that means okay. that it's, it's a bit harder for him to infect people you already infect. Um, I mean, oh, I'm sure research. Forgot that was a thing in this. In cure. Harvey's going hyper aggressive, Sam. Watch out. Look, he's already he's uh, already got caught the DNA. You can see it in the in his oh. screen. See the war playing out. Yeah. Where did you start? Huh? You'll never have you tried Korea? Pardon? Have you, have you checked out Korea yet? Maybe Korea? I, I reckon it's got to be an Asian country. I think in Japan. Maybe it was China. Yeah, it could be Japan. I don't know. Probably. Yeah, it's close to it. Mm. Mm. Check. I think maybe getting a uh, total organ failure this early on may have been a mistake. They, they, they don't like you it. look dark because they'll show where he. Maybe it was China after all. I mean, most of the dots are in China, actually. Or tricky one. Sam, you need to you need to help yeah. him get cured. Uh, it was tipped all of a sudden, isn't it? Yeah. And as long as you can keep him from infecting yours, he, he might just burn himself out as well. Like, if you can keep him out of a few islands, then he won't be able to, he won't, he won't be able to go for it. Oh, you need a nine mimic, are you? That's an a advanced tactic for you, Sam. <laughs> how, how I won the game against the bot. Just hide in the corner and hope they go away. <laughs> What is cure percent? Oh, how is cure? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm started on me. No. So maybe now, James, speaking of cure, maybe now is a good time to talk a little bit about what's next for us and what we're doing now at the base. Yeah, sure. So, so we're, we're working on. Um, a cure update for plaguing, which takes the whole concept of plaguing and flips it around on its head. So players are instead trying to, to stop a disease outbreak. And what we're, we're this is something I've, I've wanted to make for years, but when we were talking with all these um, experts and um, when we were doing our original donations for, to, to help help fight COVID, it kept on being said how they thought it'd be really helpful to for us to to accelerate our plans to make this this cure version of the game. So. It's been something we've been working on now for, for a good number of months. And it, it takes, it, it's not about COVID, it's, it's about the, the sort of the generic plaguing diseases, but it, but it lets players really see and experience some of the um, complexities that go into s stopping a disease. It, it could, to be honest, be a whole new game, but we've decided to put it in as an update for Plaguing, or a DLC will be on Steam, and we're actually making it available to everyone for free at the moment, because we've decided it's it's more important that, that people can, can interact and experience um, so, some of, sort of, sort of the, the complexities behind stopping a disease. Um, rather than any sort of financial motives from our side of things. So yes, we just we decided we're gonna it's gonna be available to everyone for free for um for the foreseeable future at this point. And we're really hoping that this helps players understand and engage it a bit more like people have found plaguing helpful on its own, but mm. this year version is really going to 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 open people's eyes to a lot of the things. How do you balance the the economic angle with the healthcare angle? How do you build up medical capacity? How do you um research and manufacture vaccines effectively all of these are things that we're aiming to kind of get into it i think i think we might we might have a, a teaser that we're going to be, should be sharing uh, soon and we're hopefully not too far away from a, a proper release but but more on that later i um, think that so far the people the kind of medical experts and stuff who have spoken to about it and have seen the game have all been really happy with the kind of work that we've done and, and the way it's kind of shaped up 
I think, yeah, yeah and, and being able to tap into their their expertise is wonderful because it lets us identify places where we we haven't quite um got 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 it right and we can adjust it and shape it so that it is right no game is ever going to get everything 100 percent accurate because it's, it's still a game at the end of the day but it's about trying to balance those um competing priorities we want it to be engaging we want it to be accessible we also want it to to, to reflect what's going on in real life as much as we can um, and yeah, I, I'm very proud of the balance we, we've struck on it so far. What's going on then? Um, in the game? Harvey's overtaken me completely. It's not up on me. I'm a bit worried right now. You need to protect your people from dying. You, there's a tech you can use to to protect it, to help them to save them from Harvey disease. Um, um, I think it's too late for that. I'm at a hundred thousand people. Doesn't matter. I mean, he's, you know, he's he's being cured quite heavily, but if they slowed down uh, so much, that I was like, I was hoping for that, and then uh, it several hundred oh, DNA like... to reach the horse at this point. <laughs> so I'm mm. dropping out. You can see it. Oh, dear. You still haven't found Harvey's start point. No, have I, you? Never, I didn't. Have I, have I found your start point? You did. Yeah. Yeah, can Mexico. you send them to an island? Yeah. Well, come on, Harvey. Where was it? Sam, send it, send it to Greenland or Iceland or something. You need, you've only got 6,000 people left. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, uh, I did check Greenland, by the way. Yeah. It wasn't there. No, no, but I mean, to, you just need to save. You need to have some people left. I see. If, if all of your people are infected with Harvey disease, I think. Uh, this, is, this is looking... I think uh, Harvey looks like he's uh, going to win. Then. He's going to get to keep his desk, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's quite sad. Poor Sam. It, it was you going... should feel bad, bad of yourself, Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> Stomping all over poor Sam. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was nerve-wracking. Uh, my, my disease it's just keeps clinging on. But... You've got set when you're doing it. Seven yeah, people. Yeah. Maybe you guys should do co-op instead next time. Like I mean, the co-op works better in if if people are more of a skill difference because it lets players kind of balance it a bit more. We can, it's to, we had to fully rewrite the the, the mechanics actually for the co-op mode because ah. we wanted I'm players. Kind of co-op. Come on, where are those last hundred and thirty odd? Uh, scattered around Africa. Australia, about it. Uh, it's, it's, it's over. <laughs> no, okay. Have you got? Oh no, you just he's Harvey's just reshuffled again. He's got too much DNA. Yeah, uh, I think it was over a good. All right, let's check the wild stats. Oh, I don't actually know how to do that in multiplayer. Where did you Where start? Where did you start, Harvey. Beans. The smallest mm -hmm. islands that no one ever thinks about. <laughs> nice. Cool. Well, well expected. That sounds crushing the beat. That seems probably like a relatively good place to uh, to, to close this thing. Um, um, is there anything else to add? <laughs> I think we have it. Me. Yeah, look forward All to right, cure. Play <laughs> Yeah, play the board yeah, game. Play the board game. Okay, well, thank you everyone for uh, tuning in. Um, we'll be uh, saying, but you know, we're very so happy to be included in this festival, um, and you know, we'll be watching the streams uh, with you guys as well. So, um, thanks so much, and um, we will uh, we'll see you soon. Yes. Bye. Okay, guys. Yes. Bye. Bye. It's like the end of our work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a clear.